Here we describe how the combined tabs are composed together intradaily for the build of the whole trading system. In this chapter we cover the concept of intraday subintervals and the signals given by each of them. We also tackle the notion of lack of information inherent in historical data. Rules that trading conceiver applies in order to assign the final signal and trade level are listed together with their realism. We linger on the benefits of intraday trading. Several examples of rules application are recounted. As explained in the key concepts section, at open and close the price is well defined because it is unique, while at threshold we have the interval low-high to consider. The build between the tabs follows the rules introduced in the previous chapters. At open and close those rules are enough. At threshold we must consider those rules for all the infinite values of the interval low-high. The possible outcomes for each combined tab are the following. It is true in all the interval low-high. It is false in all the interval low-high. It is true in some sub-intervals of low-high and false in the others. When combining all the tabs together we must consider all of their sub-intervals together. This way each candle or bar is divided into sub-intervals. Such sub-intervals are defined as the ranges of values within the low-high where any of the combined tab changes values. For each of such sub-intervals, Trading Conceiver evaluates which tabs are true and determines the whole signal. The rules applied for determining such signal within each specific sub-interval are those described in the previous chapters in particular in combining the tabs and disambiguate. We end up with the candle being divided in sub-intervals, each with its own signal. That signal holds only for a specific sub-interval. For different sub-intervals, the signal could be different. The outcome is a subdivision of the interval low-high, where in each subdivision the signal might be different. The question is, which signal should we pick up? Let's make a very general example for illustrative purposes only. Let's assume that as a consequence of where the combined tabs are true in the interval low-high, a candle between low and high ends up being divided into five subintervals. In this table there are six combined tabs, where as usual one means true and zero false. The table shows also the five subintervals xi, xi plus one. For instance, the long tab is true in subintervals x1, x2 and x4, x5, while the short tab in x1, x2, x2, x3 and x5, x6. The endpoints x1 through x6 of the intervals are the thresholds. In each of the subintervals, the rules of the previous chapters must be applied to get the signal. Five signals are derived s1 through s5 one for each subinterval. For instance, signal S1 holds for the subinterval X1, X2 and the signal S2 for X2, X3. In general, these signals will be different from each other. Given the signals S1 through S5, which signal should we consider for trading? The threshold phase temporally is a period from open to close. However, the only information present in the historical data is the interval low-high. We only know that at a certain time the low price was reached, and at another time the high price was. We know nothing else. In particular, we lack the following information. We don't know if the low was hit before or after the high. We don't even know if they were hit multiple times. In general, we don't know which levels within low-high are crossed first and which at a later time. We don't know the price swing between the open low, high and close. Price swings could be numerous. The same level or threshold could be crossed multiple times. Usually not all the values within low-high are touched. There can be gaps. This is a very strong point. We don't know what prices the trade could be made at. Whatever price level we'd like to trade, we don't know if it had been possible in reality. Another consequence of gaps is that thresholds could be crossed in unexpected orders. 
For instance, in this example, we can't assume that threshold 1 is crossed before threshold 2 just because it is nearer to the open price, because they could be crossed simultaneously if a gap occurs, with a gap level above threshold 2. Trading Conceiver applies the following rules in order to decide the final signal. The most important assumption is that just one signal is given for the threshold phase. In general, multiple trades are possible within this span of time. Due to the lack of information explained, Trading Conceiver determines only one signal for all the duration of the threshold phase. We are summing up what would happen at threshold in just one trade. Consider that after the first trade at threshold, all conditions change and we can't use the current tab's values anymore because relative to the previous trade. So we try to make one best assumption. All signals are ignored. If there is a long position open, all intervals giving long signals are ignored. This is because in these intervals the signal is hold, that is basically nothing happens. If all the signals in the subintervals are equal, that is the chosen signal. If the signals in the subintervals differ, the chosen signal is always the one which results in no open trade. So if there is no open position, the signal is a hold. If there is an open position, the signal is liquidate. In reality, this isn't necessarily the signal you would trade, because you probably would trade the first occurring signal. But remember that we don't know the exact sequence of events and that gaps can complicate things further. So this is the most neutral and conservative choice we can make. In this case, a different signals flag is set for the day. All the previous rules, although sound, are of course arbitrary. Other rules could be devised. Nonetheless, any rule would be arbitrary. Different rules would lead to different trading outcomes, that is to different profit and loss results. Keep this in mind in your evaluation of the trading system you conceived. When only one of the combined tabs is true in the interval low-high, then the result is definitely more realistic, because only one signal is present. This could match more closely what would happen in the real world if you trade only once intradaily and not multiple times. Once the trading signal has been decided based on the previous rules, the trading price must be set. We are dealing with intervals, but now we must define one price level at which the trade occurs. The trading price is computed according to the following rules. For determining the trade level, the thresholds are considered. Thresholds are the intervals and points. As explained in the previous paragraph, all signals are ignored, and so are their thresholds. So if a threshold is involved only with whole signals, it is dismissed. Usually the low and high values of the price are not factored in unless significant. If after considering all the thresholds and dismissing the ones involved only in whole signals, just one threshold remains, then that's the trading level. If on the contrary we end up with multiple thresholds, the average between the most extreme ones is taken. So we average the lowest and the highest thresholds. In this case, a different thresholds flag is set for the day. Again, it is clear that any choice we make regarding the trading threshold will be arbitrary. As stated previously, different rules would lead to different trading outcomes, that is to different profit and loss results. Keep this in mind in your evaluation of the trading system you conceived. When only one threshold is present within the candle, the result is definitely more realistic. Trading not only at close but also at threshold might be beneficial to the profit and loss of the trading system. You're acting as soon as possible, as soon as you know that the trade must be accomplished, without waiting for the closing of the market. Think for instance of the stop loss. You define a level, a threshold, where to liquidate a position because the market is going the opposite direction you were expecting. Probably you want to act right away as soon as the level is crossed, not to wait longer until the market closes when things could get worse. Timing is crucial. In this example you can see the difference, the delta, you would lose by acting at close instead of threshold. 
There is a short position open, but the market starts rising. A bad thing for the short position. The stop loss liquidates the position intradaily, while acting at close we would have a lower profit equal to the indicated delta. Sometimes it could even be a difference of transforming a winning position to a losing position. In this other example is depicted the benefit of acting at threshold without waiting for close. A Duncan channel upper line breakout is traded. A long position is open intradaily as soon as the price crosses the upper line. By waiting until close, we would decrease the profit by the indicated delta. Clearly, it could even be the other way around. In some cases, waiting for the close would generate better results. Experiment. When you are trading a real market and get a signal, for instance a stop loss from your trading system, indicating that the current trend is the opposite with respect to the currently open position, what would happen in reality? Would you endure to wait for the close price or would you want to act immediately? That involves trader psychology. If you are emotional, probably you will liquidate the position as soon as possible. Hence, despite the above mentioned arbitrariness in the applied rules, consider using Trading Conceiver for composing trading systems acting intradaily too. Don't simply rule out that possibility just because of some discretionary assumptions. Do try using intraday algorithms already defined in Trading Conceiver and do select the radio button in the When to Trade pane at Open Threshold and Close. We highlighted the arbitrariness involved in trading at threshold and that's a fact. However, that doesn't mean that results are unrealistic or useless. With a well-conceived trading system, trading at threshold can be realistic, useful and above all profitable. Consider this example built by composing all elementary algorithms trading intradaily. Long tab, moving average of Duncan channel upper line upside breakout. Short tab. Moving average of Duncan Channel lower line downside breakout. Stop loss tab. ATR based stop loss. Take profit tab. Kellner Channel with base take profit. We used multiple tabs, all operating intradaily. In all resulting trades at threshold, there is only one signal and one threshold involved, so arbitrariness is basically non existent. All the following signals happen at threshold and are well defined. Here there is a downside breakout of the Duncan channel lower line, so a short signal is given at the value or threshold given by the Duncan channel lower line. Here the stop loss is triggered at the stop loss level threshold. Here there is an upside breakout of the Duncan channel upper line, so a long signal is given at the value or threshold given by the Duncan upper line. Here the take profit is triggered at the take profit level or threshold. In the following examples, only the combined tabs giving signals that is a true are shown. Those not shown are false. The colors of the background of each interval in the column signals at intervals match those of the buy and sell signals given by them. Long, short, liquidate, hold. The colors are selected in the table window. In this example, no position is currently open and only the short tab is true in the threshold phase. The only interval to consider is that of the short tab. There is only one threshold because we can dismiss the low price level. In the interval low T1, the short tab is true. The signal is clearly short. As there is only one signal, short, that's the signal chosen for the trade. And the flag different signals is not set. Moreover, there is only one threshold and that's the value chosen for the trade. Consequently, the flag different thresholds is not set. The simulation of this case is very realistic in the sense that it could strictly match reality. A similar example where there is an open position. This time only the stop loss tab is true, giving a liquidate signal. In this example, currently there are no open trades. Two tabs are true in the threshold phase. There are no standard thresholds, but only the endpoints of the full interval low-high. 
The situation is the following. The interval low high, both the long and the liquidate short taps are true. This is not an ambiguous case because with no open trades, the liquidate short doesn't apply and we are left with the long signal. The signal throughout the interval is long and that's exactly the reported final signal. The flag different signals is not set. The trading level is set to the average of low and high. The flag different thresholds is set. It can happen that for a bar low equal to high. This changes nothing to the reasoning. This example is current trade long. Only the long tab is true confirming the signal which becomes hold. To highlight that the low and high values are the same, the interval is written as low equals high, low equals high. In this example is current trade short. There are two tabs true in the threshold phase. In the interval low T1 only the short tab is true, saying to a short. Being a short position already open, the signal is hold. In the interval T1, T2, no tab is true, so the signal is hold. In the interval T2 high, only the long tab is true, saying to go long. So we have the following signals for the threshold phase. Hold in low T1, hold in T1, T2, long in T2 high. All signals are ignored, so the final signal is long and the flag different signals is not set. Moreover, thresholds involved only in whole signals are ignored, T1 in this case, and we can dismiss low and high levels too. So only one threshold remains, T2, and that's the value chosen for the trade, and the flag different thresholds is not set. This is a typical case happening when trading channel breakouts, like the one exemplified in the paragraph Realism when a candle engulfs both the lower and the upper lines. Even in this case, the result is very realistic and non-arbitrary, because as long as there are old signals, no trade is performed, and as soon as there is another signal, the new trade is accomplished at the expected level or threshold. In this example is current trade long. So the take profit is referred to the current long position. Two tabs are true in the threshold phase. There is one threshold because we can dismiss the low and high price levels. In the interval low T1, only the long tab is true. A long signal when the current position is long means a hold signal. In the interval T1 high, both the long and the take profit tabs are true. A long signal together with a liquidity signal given by the take profit when the current position is long is settled by the disambiguate choice, a liquidate in this case. So we have the following signals for the threshold phase. Hold in low T1, liquidate in T1 high. Hold signals are ignored. So the final signal is liquidate and the flag different signals is not set. Moreover, there is only one threshold and that's the value chosen for the trade and the flag different thresholds is not set. In this example, there are no currently open trades. Three tabs are true in the threshold phase. There is only one threshold. In interval low T1, both the long and the liquid long tabs are true. This case is settled by the disambiguate choice, a hold in this case. In the degenerate interval T1 T1, all tabs are true. Remember that intervals are always considered close in trading conceiver. This case is settled by the same disambiguate choice as before, a hold in this case, because the liquid at short is don't care. The generate intervals like this happen mostly when two opposite algorithms are used for long and short. In this example we use for didactical purposes only. Moving average of SMA downside breakout for liquidate long. Moving average of SMA upside breakout for liquidate short. 
In the interval T1 high, both the long and the liquid short taps are true. As explained in one of the previous examples, the signal in this interval is long. As before, as whole signals are ignored, the final trading signal is long. There is only one threshold and that's the one used for the trading level. The flex, different signals and different thresholds are not set. It is perfectly normal to have more than one interval with the same signal. In this example is current trade long. So the stop loss is referred to the current long position. Two tabs are true in the threshold phase. There are two thresholds. In the interval low T1, both the short and the stop loss tabs are true. The stop loss wants to liquidate the long position and the short wants to open a short position. They are giving consistent signals, namely a stop and reverse. So the signal is short. In the interval T1, T2, only the short tab is true. The signal is clearly short. So we have the following signals for the threshold phase. Short in low T1, short in T1, T2. They match. Obviously, the whole trade signal is short. The flag different signals is not set. The trade level is set to the average between the two thresholds. The flag different thresholds is set. In this example, is current trade long? So the stop loss is referred to the current long position. Two taps are true in the threshold phase. There are two thresholds. In the interval low T1, both the short and the stop loss taps are true. The stop loss wants to liquidate the long position and the short wants to open a short position. They are giving consistent signals, namely a stop and reverse. So the signal is short. In the T1 T2 interval, only the stop loss tab is true. The stop loss wants to liquidate the long position, so the signal is liquidate. In the interval T2 high, no tab is true. So we have the following signals for the threshold phase. Short in low T1, liquidate in T1 T2. They are different signals, so the final signal is liquidate. The different signals flag is set. Now we have two thresholds. The final trading price is chosen as the average between the two. The different thresholds flag is set too. These signals might look coherent, liquidate the current long position and enter a new short position. However, in one interval the signal is just liquidate, while in the other is go short. The signals are not simultaneous. In general, we don't know which one would occur first. Remember, we are summing up what would happen at threshold in just one trade. So the final signal is liquidate. In this example, is current trade long? We have five taps through different signals, different thresholds, and a degenerate interval. We have the following subintervals. In this subinterval, the long position should be liquidated because of the liquidate long and stop loss tabs. Moreover, the short tab says to go short, so the signal in this subinterval is short. Stop and reverse. In this other subinterval, the long position should be liquidated because of the liquidate long tab. The short tab says to go short, so the signal in this subinterval is short. In this other interval, the liquid long tab says to liquidate the long position, so the signal in this subinterval is liquidate. In this degenerate interval, the liquid long tab says to liquidate the long position, while the liquid short tab is uninfluential when a long position is open. So the signal in this subinterval is liquidate. In this subinterval, the liquid short tab is uninfluential when a long position is open, so the signal in this subinterval is hold. In this final subinterval, the long tab says to go long, and we are already long, which means to hold the position. The liquid short tab is uninfluential when a long position is open, so the signal in this subinterval is hold. 
we have different signals, so the overall signal for the combination of all tabs is liquidate, and the different signals flag is set. After dismissing the thresholds involved only in whole signals, we are left with more than one threshold, so the different thresholds flag is set too. The final threshold at which we assume the trade is accomplished is the average between the most extreme remaining thresholds, excluding low and high. In this picture, not to scale, we can see the candle together with its subintervals. The first, short. The second, short. The third, liquidate. The fourth, degenerate, liquidate. The fifth, hold. The last, hold. The final liquidate signal appears at the average of the two extreme remaining thresholds.